Halo hydrogen formation is very similar to halogenation. Even the recipe is very similar. You add a halogen, here I'm using bromine, but it could just as well be chlorine or iodine. That's the halo part of, ha hal of halo hydrogen formation. The second thing you're going to be adding is water, and that's the hydra part of the halo hydrogen formation. Like if you hydrate, you drink a lot of water, and so here, halo hydrogen formation, that's where you add a halogen and water. Now, one of the water, the water molecule ends up losing one of its hydrogens. It basically replaces a bond to one of the hydrogens with a bond to a carbon. And so effectively, the two things you're going to add is a halogen and an OH, the OH coming from the water. So that's halo hydrogen formation. Now, there are a couple details here. The first detail is that this is anti-addition. Whatever side of the double bond the bromine adds on, the OH is going to add on the other side. The second thing to note is that the OH will always go to the carbon that is more substituted, the carbon bonded to more carbons. Now we can see why if you think about the mechanism. The first step is exactly the same as the first step of the mechanism in bromination. The pi bond is your, is your nucleophile. The bromine molecule is perfectly non-covalent, but the bromine atoms are really big. And so when the bromine molecule gets close to the pi bond, it feels the electrons there, and the electrons in bromine flee to the opposite side of the bromine atom. The bromine is so big, there's plenty of room for those electron refugees on the other side of the, uh, of the atom. And so that side of the atom becomes positive, and the side where the electrons are fleeing, or, uh, sorry, the side where the electrons are going becomes slightly negative, and the side where the electrons are fleeing, that side of the atom becomes slightly positive. And so you induce this dipole, as we discussed in the video, to talking about the concepts behind bromination or halogenation. These halogens are very large, and so they're polarizable. And it's the polarizability that turns this into an electrophile that the nucleophilic pi bond can attack. The other bromine leaves as a leaving group. And so you end up with two things. You end up with a bromide ion, that was this bromine leaving group, and then you end up with a carbocation that has a bromine on it. So that's this other part of the molecule. And we talked in the previous example in, in halogenation, the concepts behind that, we talked about how, just like with the mercurinium ion in oxymercuration, demercuration, right after the mercury adds to the double bond, you've, it, for, it goes to the less substituted carbon, the carbocation forms in the more substituted carbon, but the mercury had a lone pair. Well, with bromination or halogenation, the halogen has a lone pair too, and it donates the electrons in that lone pair to stabilize the carbocation. And that forms this sort of triangular bromonium ion. Now, so far, this mechanism is 100% exactly the same as halogenation or bromination. So if I went, and went through this and it, and it seemed really fast, I encourage you to watch the video on the concepts behind halogenation. And we'll go through all those steps and draw this out one molecule at a time. Now, in the case of halogenation, the second halogen, the bromide, is what attacked as a nucleophile in this next step. And that is where bromination or halogenation is different from halohydrin formation. Because in the case of halohydrin formation, the nucleophile attack that attacks is not the bromine or the bromide ion. The nucleophile that attacks is water. There's so much, so many water molecules here. A water is able to, the slightly negative oxygen in the water is, is able to, right, the oxygen is very electronegative, so it steals electrons from the hydrogens, which become slightly positive. The slightly negative oxygen is able to act as a nucleophile and attack the slightly positive carbon of the bromonium ion. So it takes the place of the bromide in the other mechanism. Now that bursts that ring open, and then you end up getting you end up getting a bromine and an H2O attached to your molecule. Now that oxygen has three bonds, so it has a full positive charge. So it just needs to lose its hydrogen to 
another water molecule. And we've seen this before. We saw this in acid-catalyzed hydration and the mechanism for that, how you can do a proton transfer and stabilize a positive charge by removing an H+. So a base can come by, steal an H+, the electrons snap back onto the oxygen, and in the grand sweep of things, what you end up with is a bromine and an OH attached to opposite sides of the double bond. Okay, so let's see where those two little details that we want to remember about this come from. First, the OH and the bromine add anti. This is the same, it's for the same reason that the bromines add anti. The bromonium ion, bromine is really big and fat and polarizable, which means that this water molecule can't attack from that same direction. This is unable to reach the bromine or that positive charge on the side where the bromine is. It just gets pushed away. So it has to attack on the opposite side below. If the bromine is above, bromonium ion is above, the OH or the H2O will attack from below. So that's the reason for the anti-addition. The other thing is that the, eight, the OH always goes to the more substituted carbon, and now you can see why. The bromine adds first, you form the bromonium ion, and the brom bromine leans toward the less substituted carbon. Because each of these bonds are like little springs, and the bromine is constantly bouncing around. As it moves around, the more substituted carbon is able to handle slight positive charges better than the less substituted carbon. And so on the whole, the bromine is bouncing around closer to the less substituted carbon to help stabilize it. That means that a slight positive charge forms on the more substituted carbon, which turns that into, elect into the electrophile that water attacks. So you could see how the two details in halohydrin formation arise. It's anti-addition because after the bromine attacks, it's really bulky in the bromonium ion, so the water has to attack from the opposite side. And the water attacks the more substituted carbon because that's the one that has the slight positive charge. That's the one that can handle the slight positive charge better. So hopefully this video helped a little bit with understanding the reason behind these little notes that we're going to apply in synthesis exercises in the next video.